Hi, this is Dell in Kansas. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video training. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your own email broadcaster. Now this will mostly be a practical uh, demonstration, but I'll, I'll cover a tiny bit of theory first. Although the how is what ultimately matters in terms of empirical results, understanding the why is also important. So let's begin. There are three main things to be aware of when you're email broadcasting. The first is that speed is your enemy in bulk or mass emailing. In fact, the, the terms bulk mailing and mass emailing give you a faulty impression. They would lead you to believe that the idea is to send out millions and millions of emails at once. When in fact, the trick isn't, the trick isn't how many you can send, it's how many you can get delivered. Sending is easy. Delivery requires some forethought. Keep in mind that hundreds of millions of dollars have been invested in technology and software to keep your marketing messages out of people's inboxes. And once you trip the alarms, it's all over. If you go over threshold, it doesn't matter at that point if you're sending out, sending out 200 per hour or 200,000 per hour. They'll all be summarily sent to spam folders and eventually blocked entirely. Gmail will even go so far as to reach into people's inboxes and spam folders and pull your messages back out and delete them if you happen to get them delivered before tripping the alarms by sending too much too fast. So the trick is always to fly under the radar. There's no such thing as sending too slow. It's better to send 150 messages per hour and be able to do this consistently for months than to shoot out 150,000 in one day at lightning speeds and get your IPs and domain names torched and rendered unusable. The second thing you should be aware of is that there are two levels of filtration the transmission and the content level. Now most people are familiar with the content level. Trigger words and phrases like sex, mortgage, porn, Viagra, Amway, make money, your income, and others will get your messages assigned spam points. The higher the number of points, the greater the likelihood of your message being classified as spam and sent to spam or junk folders rather than the inbox. Now the transmission level of filtration is infinitely more important. This is the IP address and the domain name through which your message is, uh, through which your mail is sent. If you can't get past the transmission level of filtration, then the content of your messages becomes immaterial. Let me state that a different way. If your transmission factors are out of whack, you can send a message out with a spam rating of zero, as far as the content is concerned, and it still won't make it to your prospects' inboxes. So how you send is just as important as what you send. The third thing to be aware of is that email broadcasting and all lead generation is a process, not an event. You'll not send out 10,000 emails today and sign up 20 people into your primary MLM business at week's end. The purpose of your initial email is simply to inspire enough curiosity to elicit a click-through to a capture page. If you try to make the sale in the email itself, your results will be poor or non-existent. And if you send your prospects straight to your replicated company provided site, your results will also be poor. Cold prospects don't know who you are or care what you think, so don't make the f mistake of thinking that they are in, or as in love with your company as you are. The fastest way to kill any new relationship is to tell them what they need instead of finding out what they think they need. The capture page's sole purpose is to inspire just a little more curiosity and get them to opt in. This is the beginning of your relationship building, not the end goal. You can find lots of good information on the finer points of these broad strokes, so I won't get into, into these too deeply here. I'll just show you how the uh, I'll show you the basic mechanics of a broadcast email campaign. So here's what you'll need: you'll need a list of emails to which to broadcast. Those are your raw leads. You need a software utility to send out the emails. That's your broadcaster. Now, some software runs locally on your computer, and some runs remotely on a hosting account. It's the latter that I'll be training on today. Third, thirdly, you'll need somewhere for your prospects to go when they express interest. Now that can either be a capture page powered by an autoresponder, or it can be a voicemail box if you just want to put a phone number in the emails instead of a web address. That actually increases deliverability if you take that approach. That'll cut down on your lead quantity, but it'll raise your lead quality since the respondents have to physically pick up a telephone and call and leave you their information rather than just clicking. And the fourth and most important piece of the equation is a follow-up plan, because it's just the statistical likelihood of your leads taking action on their own is minimal. Especially in the case of an MLM project, 95% of people who express interest in your business will never join it. 
So a good lead monetization strategy is a necessity to keep from spending yourself out of business. More plainly stated, since, you prob since they probably aren't going to join your business, sell them something that will ostensibly help them with theirs. Money is money as long as it's flowing towards you. Here's a brief overview of my approach. Personally, I only bother with email broadcasting when it's something with mass appeal like grocery savings or cell phones, and even better than either of those two is something with a low or no startup costs, which nevertheless creates upfront cash. Now, I'm not here right now to elaborate on or push any specific home business programs, but you're welcome to contact me for my exact strategy. Here's a random tip. If you're pushing a traditional MLM, especially a nutritional, forget about trying to sell your product directly via email. Only, a, only an opportunity-focused campaign has any chance of being profitable enough to make it worth the time. Okay, so your first step, underneath this video you'll find a link that will take you to the JMailer Pro site. It's uh, marked step one. Let me bring this up here for you. Okay, when you click on that link it'll take you to this screen. You are going to click on order now. Your first step is to choose one of these hosting accounts. Um, I don't recommend HostGator only because their I mean their deliverability is great but they're hyper they're like hypersensitive as far as um, as far as any kind of email broadcasting software so if you use HostGator you do so at your own risk because chances are that even before the month is over you'll they'll shut you down they don't give you a refund either so I would recommend that you choose one of these others I have personally used all of these except uh, mid phase uh, mid phase is a UK based company they've got a great reputation I've just never used them personally I have used all the others myself with good results so you're going to click on one of these links actually underneath this video there'll be uh, links marked and if you could use those that would be appreciated. Um, in exchange, I will actually uh, set your software up for you. So let me back up a step. First thing you're going to do is order your hosting account and domain name. Okay, then you're going to take the domain name and put it here in the step two block. And then in step three, you are going to choose. If you're familiar, if you're familiar with FTP and cPanel use, you can actually install it yourself here. Uh, if you're not familiar with these things, I can actually install that for you. Uh, this company will actually install it for you for an additional $10. I'll do it for you for free since you're a subscriber of mine. Uh, once you get your software ordered and it's all installed, once you run the software, you will see a login screen like this. See, it's marked Jmail or Pro. This is an existing account that I have, so I will... log in here you'll choose your username and password during setup and sign up and you will come to a screen like this as you can see it's a place for you to upload I'm gonna click on edit settings real quickly here all of this will be set up for you um, if you you know if you set it up yourself or whether you or if you have a uh, third party set it up for you either the company or myself this will all be filled in for you, so you won't really need to mess with any of this other than the sending defaults. You can have a default from name here. This is probably the only field you're ever going to need to modify. So we'll go back to the main screen. See this field is marked upload a CSV. All the leads that you need or that you uh, use through this software utility are going to need to be in the CSV format, and that's pretty much the default format that any lead company will send you the uh, send you the leads in anyway so that works out well so if you click on browse I'll just choose one of these uh, these are leads that I get from key net so you just select select one click on upload file obviously in your case you'll navigate to wherever you happen to have your leads okay now these are the this is the title column of the lead file. Not all lead files have them, but most of them do. What this what these uh, tags over here allow you to do is to customize your email message. You, you can insert the prospect's first name. Uh, by and large, that'll usually be all you need. Uh, although sometimes you'll want to insert their phone number. That actually makes a good subject line. 
if you type something like if you go something like first name are you still at or rather can I still reach you at and then insert their phone number now that does two things first of all the personalization will likely get you a higher response rate second of all with these variables changing in every message it reduces the commonality of your messages so that's another factor that keeps you under threshold when when the ISPs see you know 100 percent identical messages flying out from the same location that tends to trigger the uh, spam alerts and then you'll suddenly find that all your messages no matter what the content is will be going into the uh, spam folders rather than the inboxes now we as marketers tend to check our spam folders uh, but not everybody does so the inbox is definitely where you want to be so you'll type your message uh, it can really be anything as you can see these fields were pre-populated when we got to this screen that's because we had that all filled out in the settings menu so we'll just type a message uh, something like well why don't I just use the one that I've been using for ZNZ Okay, you'll insert your link here for whatever it is you're doing. Now, this next part is absolutely critical. Oh, I'm sorry, let me, I forgot one, something that's almost equally as critical. At the end of your message, you're going to put something, the way I phrase it, and you can phrase this any way you want, my phrasing is, if you like to be excluded from future updates, Okay, we're going to go down here where it says unsubscribe link. We're going to insert that tag. What that's going to do is give your prospect an automated, um, or I should say your email recipient, an automated way to remove themselves from future mailings. That's huge. It's entirely automated, so there's nothing that you ever need to do with it. So basically what will happen is if they opt out, if their email address happens to appear on any other list you ever purchase or use, they'll automatically be excluded from your future mailings so it definitely makes your life more headache free alright so be certain to insert your unsubscribe links as a matter of fact the system won't even let you send out an email if you forget so it's not even something you have to even if you do forget it's not going to be the end of the world because the system will flag you and tell you to go back and put it in there okay this is an HTML capable mailer so if you know how to design HTML marketing messages this mailer will support that I will tell you that HTML messages are the most likely to be filtered content regardless so it's my recommendation that you only ever use the plain text message op excuse me plain text message option now this part is what's gonna make or break you right here that number is set to 90 by default you always 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 want to change that to a 45 or lower I'll say that again you always want this number to be at a 45 or lower this is your send rate and it's gonna send out this whatever number you have in here it's gonna send out this number of messages every 15 minutes so setting that to 45 means you'll be sending out 180 messages an hour which doesn't sound like a lot but that'll give you about 4300 messages a day going out and as long as you uh, you know, as long as your deliverability stays high, which it will if you send these out slowly, you know, sending out 4,300 messages consistently and daily will give you the same net impact as sending out 50,000 a day faster. Because when you send out that many that fast from the same place, most of them are going to get swallowed up anyway by the spam filters, or the spam filters rather. So. It's better to send out 4,300 a day and have 95% deliverability, uh, deliverability than to send out 50,000 a day and have 2% deliverability. 
So once you have your, let me, I'll just review all this for you. These three fields will most likely be pre-populated for you because that'll be all set up in the settings full in the settings option on the first screen. So you'll on this screen you'll rarely have to touch these unless for some reason you want to change your from name. Uh, your subject line you'll put in. You can use these tags over here. They're not mandatory, but having these tags uh, to personalize your emails to your prospects that does two things: it increases your response rate and it also or I'm sorry, increases your click-through rate, and it will also uh, reduce the commonality to the filters, so that it'll be, you know, you'll be less likely to be flagged and trigger any alarms. Type in your message here. Always be sure to include the subscribe link tag, which you can find down here. I recommend always using the plain text option, although the mailer will support HTML messages. And this number here is critical. Always make sure it is at a 45 or lower. Okay, once you have all these things put in place, just click on Start Sending. It, over here, it'll tell you how many leads are in the list that you uploaded. So there's 2,001 there. You hit, and then you will get a screen like this and you're done your mailing is already in progress you can close this tab you can close the window you can reset your computer because the software isn't running on your computer it's running remotely on the hosting account so once you hit the uh, start sending button on the other screen you no longer need this window open what will happen is you will you can come back and log you can log back in this number here will update you as it sends out each batch it'll update this number so you'll know how many are left and that concludes the practical demonstration portion of this training I'm gonna go ahead and abort this mailing because I didn't really want those messages to go out to those leads okay so that re that uh, concludes the training I thought was trying to keep this 20 minutes or less and it looks like I will squeak in right under the wire so if you need anything covered in more detail feel free to contact me and I'll walk you through uh, if anything was unclear or if I covered anything too vaguely or too quickly also feel free to give me a call all uh, underneath this video you'll find the a list of the hosting accounts that work well and a list of the lead sources that work well so if you need help with anything else, feel free to give me a call, and I will talk to you then. Take care.